Okay, welcome back everyone. I got a quick follow-up video to that uh, last one I made just <laughs> a few moments ago. And this is the little CD box set of, uh, of Fleetwood Mac 1969-74. to So this covers everything from uh, Peter Green's last record with the band, which is my favorite of their Peter Green era, uh, all the way to 74 with Heroes Are Hard to Find. And then it's got the bonus live from the record plant um, right at the end of 74. And uh, yeah, so this is a, a cool little box. I don't know. I just had to have it. I, I don't even really listen to CDs anymore. I do usually just rip them to my computer. But I just love having the physical media. And for all these bands that I used to collect all their their stuff, you know, it, it there would be a big, you know gaping hole or a gap in the discography up there, the CD discography. Um, so let's rip into this thing. It says six studio albums remastered on CD for the first time. Yeah, these are remastered. Um, they sound pretty good, but um, it's weird. The vocals on, on them are, are lower, and sometimes they're a little too low, to be honest with you. Um, so, plus uh, previously unreleased live performance from 74. Uh, 20 bonus tracks and eight previously unissued tracks. So I've checked out, uh, I've checked out a fair amount of the bonus tracks on the unissued tracks, and uh, yeah, there were some good little thrills in there. Um, oh, okay. So does it open up like, like a book kind of? Oh, so they're all in these little slip cases. I kind of should have expected as much. Um. It's better for the environment. I'm not a big fan of them. They look pretty cool, though. Um, so, we got uh, just the credits. Um, so, pretty much every CD on here has bonus tracks, which isn't true for the vinyl set there. Um, the, 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 can't talk this morning. The Then Play On one comes with, um, the bonus tracks that were on a couple of reissues that came out recently. So they, um, they got a Well Part 1 and 2 on there, uh, which is amazing. Uh, Green Monolishi, which is one of their best singles, and World in Harmony. And then they got, uh, they got Dragonfly and Purple Dancer on Kiln House there. Uh, those are really great. I got the Record Store Day release of those years ago. And uh, Jeweled Eye Judy, the single version, which up to this, I didn't even know that was a single or had a single version. I really like that song, though. Uh, and then Station Man, the single version, which I think just basically cuts out the intro. So that's not very exciting. I love the intro. Um, and then uh, Future Games and Bear Trees, two of my all-time favorite Fleetwood Mac records. Um... These are the two where I discovered the band. Uh, I think it was the last year of high school, and uh, I just kind of switched switched gears and started listening to a lot of Fleetwood Mac. And, uh, and then I found the dance, and between these two and then the dance from the Buckingham Knicks era, those three just fan for life. I, I had so much, you know, fun delving through this discography after that, and... When I heard the dance, you know, my parents used to play that when I was about mm, 10 years old or so, so I just got really nostalgic for it. So, um, Future Games comes with single version of Sands of Time, which is nothing to write home about. The original track is amazing, though, like 10 out of 10, one of Danny Kerwin's most beautiful compositions. Uh, there's an alternate version of Sometimes, which is interesting. An alternate version of Lay It All Down, which I think is the same alternate version on 25 Years the Chain, which is a great little compilation, or big one, it's like four CDs. Um, Stone, which that one was really interesting. I did not know there was a track called Stone recorded for future games, and it's a lovely little track, actually. I think I like it more than Sometimes. If they swapped those out on the album, it would have been, you know, a just as great or better album. And then there's an alternate version of Show Me a Smile, which is, it's actually really good. And then uh, What a Shame, 
the unedited version, which is like a, an eight minute jam, eight or nine minutes, and um, it's cool to see, you know, what a shame, did I say such a shame? What a shame, you know, that version versus the album version. It's cool to hear the whole jam, and uh, <clears throat> I think they did that for um, the, the Madge sessions, Searching for Madge and Fighting for Madge, off then Play On, and you can hear, like, on some bonus edition of that, not this one, but you can hear like this whole 20 minute jam and you can see where they got the studio cuts from. Um, and then Bear Trees has Trinity mono version. Um, there was a version of Trinity on the aforementioned 25 years, the, the chain in 1992. That was one of the, you know, bonus tracks that was supposed to attract, you know, the old, the old fans to, you know, repurchase the songs they did have for a bunch of bonus rarities that, you know, hadn't been heard up to that point. Uh, there's a single version of Sentimental Lady and a live version, I haven't heard that one yet, of Homeward Bound, so it'll be interesting to hear that, because Homeward Bound is a pretty cool Christine track, and um, it'll be interesting to hear the guitar interplay live, because my favorite part of that track is right at the end when they really get cooking, and, uh, Danny and Bob kind of trade these solos off, um, which isn't something they they did much. They usually kept it quite separate because uh, they weren't they didn't really get along very well. Bob was always trying to collaborate with Danny, and Danny was kind of a loner and didn't want much to do with Bob. So Bob kind of gave up after a while. He said, "I guess we're not going to be pals," which is too bad. Bob's so chill. He was such a chill guy. Rest in peace, both of those guys. Like. Two of my favorite uh, musicians, for sure. Um, Penguin doesn't have any bonuses whatsoever, but I am very interested to hear it remastered. That'll be a lot of fun. I've heard a lot of the Mystery to Me remastered, and yeah, it was it was really good. It was really clean, but um, I am... It is weird, though, how low in the mix the vocals are for, you know, pop music. They're a little... They're almost too low, which isn't something I say often, but... Uh, uh, Mystery to Me comes with, I should keep showing this, comes with For Your Love, uh, the mono promo edit, which is probably the same that's on the 7-inch in that other box set, and then, um, yeah, one of the, the coolest bonus tracks is, of course, Good Things Come to Those Who Wait, which it was supposed to be on Mystery to Me, where For Your Love is, and then the record label said, nope, you gotta do a Yardbirds cover instead. Uh, before, right before they shipped the album. I think some were already pressed with the title Good Things Come to Those Who Wait, and then you bought the record, and then For Your Love starts, and it's like, huh? <laughs> like, this is a cover song. And I don't think the band was too enthusiastic about it. I don't think they ever performed it live. No, I'm pretty sure they didn't. Because, yeah, they. I think they did it against their will. It's an, it's an okay cover, but uh, it's got nothing on the Yardbirds, that's for sure. Uh, the Heroes Are Hard to Find one. The only bonus track is Heroes Are Hard to Find, the single version. That's not too exciting. Uh, stick with the album version. And then, of course, at the end, uh, Live from the Record Plant, uh, which I believe was December 15th, 1974. Uh, right at the end there. And then, of course, 75, you know, history would be made with Buckingham and Nick's. So, I'll just shift over here. Now these are really clean. The image quality is really good, like compared to my old CD issue of this. And then there's there's the group. Look at those scruffy young lads. Peter Green, rest in power. Peter Green, rest in power. Danny. What a great era. So happy we still have Jeremy and Mick and John still with us. And then. Oh, Kiln House. Thank you, Christine McVie, for making that album cover. She wasn't even officially a part of the band yet. Uh, she played on Mr. Wonderful, and you can hear her on this one. But uh, she wasn't part of the band yet officially. She just played keyboards once in a while, and you can hear her vocals on this one in the background on Station Man and stuff like that. But uh, it's so good that they commissioned her to do that lovely little album cover. It really is cool.
and uh, yeah so these are pretty typical looking CDs there that's what all the reprise stuff looks like and then what else is in here oh cute there's a tiny little booklet oh that's awesome actually huh very very cool look at that <laughs> Oh man, it's so vintage, them recording at the Kiln House and that. Cool, I like. And there's the inside with the track list and everything. I like that little bonus book and the little penguins. I'm pretty sure they're doing it. Penguin love. I'm, I'm sure that John McVie probably was like, <laughs> let's put some penguins doing it. <laughs> Penguins became the band's unofficial mascot, like, or maybe official, actually. Not a lot of people know that, like, that joined on for the Buckingham Knicks era. Like, sometimes they put penguins on things, but, I mean, now for the 50, 50 year, they seem to put it on everything. And then, I'll try to hurry this up, this is going too slow. There's, uh, Future Games, that one's not, like, a little gatefold or anything, so there's nothing to show anyway. And there's, they're the band members at the time. We have to remember that every album that came out from 68 to 75, the, the lineup changed in some way. They either gained a member, lost one or two, lost one, gained two. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I love that. It's Mick, Danny, Christine, Bob, and a penguin. <laughs> John couldn't show up, so... <laughs> couldn't show up to the photo shoot. Just put a picture of a penguin there. Uh, bare trees, nice and moody. This is what it, It's September when I'm filming this, but this is what it looks like uh, outside right now. Smoky. That's fog, but it looks just the same. And there's the back. Bare trees is an amazing album. Penguin gatefold like the uh just like the record i know a lot of people think that's a hideous cover or it looks like a prog cover gone wrong but i like it i think it's great it doesn't really suit the music within like it kind of looks more like something that elp or something would put on their cover or, you know the one after tarkus the one after the armadillo tank is a killer penguin see what i was telling you about these penguins here and then Mystery to Me is also a little gatefold, just like the, uh, there they are, just like the LP. Another one, people always, I see this on lists that's like top 10 worst album covers of the 70s and that. Uh, it works for me, I, I don't mind it. I can see why people don't like this one, but it's interesting, like it's interesting to look at. People don't like this one for two reasons, but, you know, you don't have to be pervy. It's not nothing like that. I, I, I get if you don't want to see that much Mick, uh, you know. <laughs> I love you, Mick, but <laughs> yikes. <laughs> Big yikes. <laughs> uh, all right, and then, uh, yeah, lastly, of course... And I'm going to put on the LP version of this one tonight. That'll be interesting to listen to. You know, listening to live performance of them when Bob fronted them is so different. Like, every era is so different. There's so much to pick up on. But, uh, yeah, they were definitely a different beast than what they became, for better or for worse. You know, I love every era. I'm fascinated by every era. But it would have been interesting to see just how far they could have gone if, uh, you know, Mystery to Me and Heroes were, were famous and Bob didn't drop out. So that's the uh, amazing little box set. Uh, yeah, so I, I like I said, I've heard the remastered Mystery to Me. It'll be fun to go through the rest of these and compare them with my LPs and my other CDs and my older LPs and just... <laughs> They're not replacing the, the old set, I can tell you that, but uh, it's cool to have. Ooh, I forgot the booklet. 
So uh, thanks for checking out my my first unboxing. Uh, this and the LPs. Um, sorry, it's kind of amateur hour, but uh, you know, you gotta start somewhere, and maybe I'll do some more in the future. I don't know. Um, so rock on, uh, f fellow Fleetwood Mac fans, and uh, yeah, uh, take care, everyone. Peace and love, and rest in peace, Peter Green, Danny Kerwin, and Bob Welch. You guys were all absolutely amazing and integral to this band in your own ways, and uh, your music will live on, and people like me will be enjoying it till, you know, till we kick the bucket, right? So, take care, everyone, and good health.